Radio Rahim here with Robert Garcia. Man, I know that you're excited about all your fighters. I know that when fights are coming up, you're as focused with one guy as you are the next. But this fight, this is your brother coming back. He's finally stepping through those ropes again to take on a professional fight, man. Just how does it feel to know that, you know, all of the strife and stress is somewhat behind you and it's time to fight? Look, man, uh, this, this last two and a half years have been a little difficult, you know, for me and my dad, you know, seeing Mike in the gym every day, sparring, helping so many fighters prepare for their fights. And uh, as a sparring partner, uh, now that we got a date, of course, it, it's, it's, it's great to know that, that Mike is back. But, uh, you know, at the same time, I also I kind of feel that that's the best thing that could have happened for Mike. You know, those two years off, actually two and a half, he did other things that he never did when he was younger. He enjoyed his family. He enjoyed traveling. He enjoyed things that you know that he never did when he was young. So, so he needed that time off. I think now, 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 it's pretty much like the beginning of Mikey's career. Cause before, it was like too easy for him, and he 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 was becoming a little bit bored of the sport. By if he would have continued fighting, I think by now, by now at this stage, he'd probably be planning on on, on retiring. Uh, and maybe retiring sometime soon. Now I think with with the hunger, with with the fights that are ahead, the divisions that he wants to conquer, you know, are, are a little bit better, more bigger challenges for him. So I think now we're gonna see the best the best out of Mikey, and uh, and 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 we're gonna see him for a little bit longer than than uh, than that he would have done it before. You know, it's interesting that he was gone for two and a half years, which is an eternity in boxing, and we see guys get fat within three months you know uh, after a fight he's already in shape but we saw him periodically through that p pace and uh, he didn't appear to ever even fluctuate much how did he keep his mind focused on the sport and w did, what did you do to make sure that he was already mentally and always ready uh, should this day come look he the see the if he would have known it was going to take two and a half years then maybe he would have he would have uh, gained weight and not do nothing but we were always in the gym because he didn't you know we didn't we didn't know when this was going to be resolved it could have been in in, in six months it could have been a year two and a half years went by but he was always in the gym always helping my other guy you know i have so many fighters around the same weight division that mike that mikey fights at so he was always there helping the guys you know he helped prepare so many kids to trump pro now they're six and no. Well, he's helped, you know, Saul Rodriguez. He's helped. He helped Maidana when Maidana was off. He helped. Uh, he helped Mikey Perez. So all those fighters that are that are that are getting ready for the fight. So that kept them, you know, going. You know, helping, be, being able to say, you know, I helped them prepare for their fights. I think it was, you know, for us. I, honestly, now that that uh, that he's free and he has a date, I think that's that's the best thing that could have happened. You said there's a lot of guys you have that are around his weight division, but now we're kind of curious what division that is. Uh, obviously, this fight is a 140 limit. Is that correct? I think it is a 140 limit, but I, if, if I'm not mistaken, Mikey's going to come in like at 137, 138, because he wants to fight for the for a world title at 135. That that's that's our 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 goal, and uh, that's what Mikey wants. If if everything go, goes well, Mikey wants to fight his his following next fight for the lightweight title, and then if something huge is there to to unify if not go to 140. you know the guys that the big wins he's had like salito or lopez those guys now in this interim uh, phase have kind of fallen out of the elite fighter ranks and whatnot and boxing fans have shuts a short memory where do you think mikey places now amongst like the best fighters that are active and what kind of road do you see for him back to the top like back in the elite ranks well for for mikey look right now it's been two and a half years so we got to get a couple of fights before i could even say he's uh he's up there with with the best fighters pound for pound but uh but he already was i think it's gonna take two or three fights before before the the fans the people the the boxing experts start not realizing and noticing that that mikey's better than he was before that because that's the way i see it especially with the challenges that's that's where you know where where we know that that mikey is going to be recognized as one of the best because the challenges he's going to get at 135 and, and 140 and eventually even 147 but uh because 126 130 like i told you earlier for mikey was like just like too easy for him so now there's challenges now now we'll see him fight top fighters in in, in the divisions and maybe 
you know, guys that are mentioned in the top 10 pound for pound. And if Mike is able to beat those guys, then of course he'll he'll be he'll be talked about, you know, pound for pound, one of the best fighters. He's managed to get into this fight without an official representative. He's not a, he doesn't have a promoter, not even a manager, even though, you know, Heyman's involved, the Bella's involved, but nobody's got him on contract. You as well as anybody know the shell game it takes to deal with promoters and get the fights you want. So with that in mind, how do you think business-wise it's best for him to proceed to get where he wants to go look with um lo you know leaning towards the you know the uh the al Heyman side and you know showtime there's so many fights out there's so many fighters that uh that mikey could fight and that if we were if we were to work something out with with al Heyman, you know all the fights are there so you know mikey doesn't really need a promoter a lot of a lot of fighters that fight for for al Heyman don't need a promoter don't have a promoter, you know, unless something, you know, Mayweather's been very interested and, in, in, you know, we're supposed to uh, meet and talk after the, uh, after Mikey's fight. Hopefully, you know, we could work something out, something huge. And uh, Mikey definitely wants to, you know, but he wants to sit down and, and see what, what's out there for him, you know, what kind of, what kind of deal. If it's a, a short term, three, four, five fight deal or a four or five year deal. It depends what, uh, what Mayweather offers is what, you know, what we're going to lean towards. But, uh, but, you know, those are, those are great opportunities to be where, where you could choose, you know, you, you could, you could choose to be a, a, a free agent, no promoter. And, and still fight those type of fights. You know, I think Mikey's in a great position. Eventually, Mikey also wants to do his own promotion. So, so maybe we could do something where Mikey's promoting his, himself. It, it all depends uh, after this fight and see see what they have to offer. With that model, it does sound like Al Heyman makes the most sense, just what we know about the sport. And a lot of guys are going overseas to get money. Al Heyman is working with Ed Hearn over there in Matchroom. Are there fighters in the UK, British fighters, that you see matching up well with Mikey, fights that you guys might be targeting? Well, Mikey wants to fight for the lightweight title, and there's two, there's two of them over there. And uh, and uh, one of them, if I'm not mistaken, is fighting this, this Saturday. So Mikey's fighting two weeks later. If uh, if everything goes well with both of them, we would love to go. You know, we we would love to go to England and and challenge uh, uh, either champ. You know, Fra I know Frank Franigan is the one fighting this Saturday. So if uh, if everything goes well with him, and then two weeks later with Mikey, then hopefully you know September October we would love to go over there and uh, and fight with the title. Because I've been there a few times. I've I've been there with some of my fighters, and it's a beautiful country. Fans are amazing when it comes to to boxing so we would definitely love to be part of that speaking of uh, mexicans fighting in the english what do you think about frampton and uh, santa cruz in a couple weeks look uh santa cruz is just uh one of those fighters that has tremendous condition throws so many punches has decent power so i definitely see uh santa cruz winning this fight and uh, you know I, I i even think that uh that santa cruz wins by uh, by knockout we saw Canelo and Khan, everybody kind of pan that fight, even though it was somewhat interesting for five rounds. What do you think about Kell Brook stepping up to Triple G? And how, is this good for the sport or is this bad for the sport? Look, this is just business now, you know, and uh, a lot of fighters uh, are, are being smart. You know, they're securing the future and uh, I don't blame them. But it, it is kind of... Uh, you know, it's difficult to to understand that that we we have to go through that. But I have fighters in, in the in the business too, so maybe Mikey will end up doing something like that when 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 uh, if the money's right. You know what I mean? Everybody's doing it now, but uh, I totally disagree, especially with this fight. You know, we're we're talking about a Walter Wade who is not considered the best Walter Wade in the business in in the world, and then we have the middleweight who is the most dangerous fighter in not only that division but in the whole in the whole boxing world uh, so that's where i see a, a total mismatch but it's a business man Kelbrook goes up loses that fight he could still come back and still world champion at walter wade uh triple g's gonna make a lot of money going to england so i don't blame him either and lastly robert you know uh, terence crawford is getting a lot of run right now he's got a pay-per-view fight and it seems like he came to uh, prominence in the vacuum that mikey left how do you see that matchup with Postal? And I know it's top rank, but c could you see a fight with uh, you know uh, Crawford and Mikey somewhere down the line? It's you know th this fight uh, this fight with uh, Postal and uh, and Crawford is, is a very tough fight for both of them. Uh, they uh, they look great in great shape, and Postal is a little bit bigger, a little bit taller, and and it looks like he's stronger. So it's 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 a tough fight for both of them. I still see Crawford winning, and uh, even though Mikey left top rank, that doesn't mean we can't work with with uh, with top rank, especially uh, you know against one of his fighters. You know they have so many talent, so much 
talent in, 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 their, in their stable of fighters that uh, in the future. Crawford could be one of uh, Mikey's uh, Mikey's opponents. You know, they uh, they could fight for a huge pay per view fight. You know, especially if if pay per view does well with uh, with Crawford this fight with uh, with Posto, then Mikey. I'm not saying now, but a few a, a couple years from now, Mikey becomes a big star where he could also he could also bring his own pay per views. Then it would be huge. You know, why not? You know, that's that's also why Mikey kind of wants to be a a free agent. And if and if we end up leaning towards the. Uh, the Al Heyman, we still want to make sure that we're able to work something out with, with, with top rank if, if those big fights are, are available. Mikey at his best, Crawford at his prime. Break that fantasy fight for me down at 140. Look, it's a great fight, man. It's a great fight. Crawford has looked great sensational in his last few fights. Mikey hasn't been active in two and a half years, so so let's let's see how Mikey does in the next the next three or four fights. And we could you know we could say something there. Right now, honestly I I can't really say anything because we haven't seen Mikey back. You know, once we see Mikey back and not just this first fight, but you know maybe two or three more after that, then uh, then we'll know where, where we're at right now. But you know we, I gotta I gotta admit it, Crawford is one of one of the best fighters in the world right now. One of my favorite fighters that are active right now. So, you know, I got I to gotta respect that too. Thanks, Robert. I know the fans are. I'm definitely excited to see Team Garcia back. Mikey's return, Radio Raheem with Robert Garcia. Thank you.